Rolling. Boom, 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 boom. Wait, I like music. Make, make music. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Jenna! <laughs> What's going Hi. on? How are you? Good. How are you? I got my, I got my, my boy with me today, Robert, hey, also Jenna. known as Bobby Two Hands. What up, awesome. though? Bobby Canode. I'm glad uh, to see you guys behind the scenes there, Bobby. Hey. It's good to be in front of the scenes. He's he's too pretty of a face to hide, you know. Yeah. Yesterday we were at a uh, an event here in Los Angeles, and um, people kept walking up to him, and be like, "What movie do I know you from?" And then he was like, "Jamil Damji's YouTube channel." <laughs> they say they really think that that was a movie, or I mean, um, I guess. Well, I guess, Jamil, like you're super famous. I don't have cable. So like, I feel like I'm one of those people that are like, oh my gosh, Jamil, you're so famous, but I've never seen your show. Sorry. No, I've I don't... never seen my show either. So it's like, I mean, look, look, television is funny because it's, you know, the, the people who watch my show on TV will never watch this on YouTube because those are participants or those are voyeurs in the space of real estate. They're They're just kind of like, they're kind of looking in, you know, they're like, ooh, fancy. And then they 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 step back and they leave. Whereas the people that are watching this right now on, on YouTube, these are people, at least it, I, I believe, that have a desire to participate, that are really trying to do something with themselves and, and get out of the day-to-day -day mundane nine to five grind, which again, I've been in there, right? Like I've when's the last time you like did a true nine to five? Jenna? <laughs> oh my. Um, that's a great question. Cause like my work history has been like super not standard. Like if you think back to like, we'll say the fifties, I guess when women didn't work, um, I was a stay at home mom for like a sliver of my life whenever I was married. And then I got right into, like, I went to college for radiology, which, you know, like I use that a ton right now. Um, and <laughs> Other than I'd say like other than needing x-ray vision whenever I'm walking into a property. But but other than that, um, That's a good one. Yeah. I, I basically I did medical sales for about seven years and I sold medical equipment and I covered nine states. And whenever I was married, this was actually like a, before I had entirely gotten um, had my daughter and then afterwards. So I covered a, a large territory, like nine states, and I traveled before her about five days a week. And then after I had her, I traveled, oh my gosh, like maybe two days a week or so. And I worked from home. So I've never really, there was a sliver though. Okay. There was a time um, for about four months. I worked at a doctor's office. I would drive an hour and a half to Pittsburgh. I would work at a pulmonologist's office. Like, isn't that like funny to think of like me and my hospital scrubs? Yeah. And I think you'd actually, look, what color were the scrubs? Were they light blue? I was allowed to wear whatever color I wanted. So, um, but, but I, I took blood work. I like, I took blood from people. I taught myself how to do that in two days before I started. <laughs> um, so I'm a quick to, learner. Like, prick, to prick a vein and like get it, you know, what you yeah. on? Yeah. So my dad works at it. Like he's the respiratory therapist. So he, what he works at a hospital. So he like took me to the ER with one of his friends and they taught me how to do it for like an hour. So like my first two days I like didn't do it. And then I did it from there then on out. So I worked eight to four there, um, for four months. And then I got back into medical sales, like after I had my daughter. And then after that, I got into real estate. So like <laughs> about a four month sliver that I've ever done like an eight to four. What about you, Jamil? Real when, quick, what was your last? My last situation? nine to five job, I was a, a collection agent. Yeah, I was so, um, I was calling people and letting them know that um, that their car was likely to get towed the next time that they parked in one of these, you know, parking lots in Calgary. This is in Canada when I lived there. And uh, it was a terrible job. It was it was absolutely like the worst. And I got fired because I started telling people that they didn't have to pay, that nothing was going to happen, that the collection company uh -huh. was like total BS and that there they had no true enforcement. And there was I like and then the boss is like, what are you doing? And I'm like, mm. <laughs> I got so mad. And I remember when I left, it was like one of those moments where I was just like, if if I could go back and see me from like, you know, the outside, I would have been like, yeah, because, <laughs> you know, just like because I, I stuck it to him. 
um, I stuck it to the man. I stuck it to the man. I just felt so like uh, sleazy, right? Because I I knew based off of what I had learned at that collection agency that so um, it was uh, M Park is the company in Canada that owns a lot of these uh, parking lots. M Park sells the debt to these collection agencies. So M Park is no longer even the owner of that debt. M Park is no longer even involved in that debt. So According to that company, if you park on their lot, they you're zeroed out because they've already sold that debt to a collection agent at or a collection agency at like 10, 20 cents on the dollar, right? Now the collection agency is trying to collect and they're trying to get an ROI on the 10 cents on the dollar that they paid for the debt. And so they're using all of these lies, they're using all these scare tactics, they're using all of this, all of this like mental manipulation to try to get somebody to to give you. And I would hear stories of people that are like, I because a lot of these parking lots are right near hospitals. And so the the tickets that people would get weren't because they were just a jerk and they didn't want to pay their parking. It's because they were in the hospital because a family members of, member of theirs was suffering and had a, some kind of a medical emergency. And so they didn't go back and put money into the or extend their time or whatever because they're in la la land in like despair and pain. And then to take advantage of that especially in those situations where it was an ongoing medical thing. And so now this person is scared that they can't even park at that hospital parking lot because if they do, they're going to get towed away. And so they've got this sick family member and they've got this collection agent telling them, how are you going to go visit your, your daughter? And these were the kind of tactics that they would have, have us That's gross. It was so gross. gross. It was so, so like I, I didn't last. Right. I'm just like, I can't, this not, yeah. nothing about this is okay. This is total BS. So in park, you suck <laughs> all of the uh, collection agents that you sell to suck. If you're watching this right now and you've got a soul, welcome. Uh, it, Jamil Damji here, <laughs> Bobby Canode here and the uh, lovely Jenna Hoover. And Hoover, we are going to have some fun today. Uh, just going to keep it light. Going to make some phone calls. Introduce you guys to a system that we've been using that have has just been incredibly, incredibly useful for going direct to seller. Now, um, for those of you that uh, have not ever tried going direct to seller before, uh, before you get the anxiety and the knot in your stomach that's like, ah, I don't want to call homeowners. Um, I get it. I have, I, I totally have had that anxiety. Um, and it, and it's because they can be, you know, sometimes they can be not the most fun conversations, right? Um, if you approach it with a specific kind of energy and lightness though, I think that you can have a great time. But one of the things that I think is really great that I've seen and been able to experience using Dr. Deal Junkie, which is the platform that we're going to be using today. And Jenna, I'm going to have you Quickly, just give folks an overview of what the system is. Give me an overview. I want to well, know yeah, how to use this. Because this this guy, okay. So so here's why I have him sitting beside me today. Most of you guys um, never get to see Bobby because um, he's behind the camera, right? And he's always shooting me and doing stuff. But when Bobby joined me, one of his aspirations, like one of the uh, the things that he had in his head, was like. I want to be closer to Jamil because I'm going to learn by osmosis, by listening, by being around him, how to wholesale, how to make money doing what he does. And he's seen me build an incredible lifestyle, make millions of dollars, have, you know, uh, uh, freedom and time. And not only, yes, he's a, he, he's a phenomenal, phenomenal um, media person. And if Bobby, you know, starts wholesaling more houses than, than, um, I want him to, I might lose him, uh, but, but he did use that. He did have it as a condition of him joining my team. He did say to me, I want to learn this. I want to start doing some business. I want to like actually make this a thing. And I think it, there's Let's no better time than, than starting now. Right. Let's go. Let's get him on the phones. Let's demystify the complexity of this thing. Right. I can tell you guys this, this guy is probably going to suck balls today. And it's okay. Thanks. <laughs> it's setting low expectations. I'm setting low expectations. <laughs> For a dramatic victory. But 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 even then, um, here's where I think the win is. I think the win is in is in having a genuine conversation. And but that that second 
if people answer the phone. Because, look, Jenna, I've been doing this a long time. Long, long time. In fact, I did a, I did a live stream for an entire year using a platform I will, that will remain nameless <laughs> where the entire time that I would be on the live, I would be dialing and I would never get through to a single person. The numbers were always disconnected, out of service, wrong number. And that's frustrating because it A, to get these lists, it's expensive. To skip trace these lists, there's a cost. And then there's the time, right? If you're watching this right now and you've got a nine to five job, there's a chance, there's a good chance that you maybe you've only got one or two hours a day to do this business, right? One or two hours. So that one or two hours has to count. Like you cannot be cheap when it comes to that one or two hours because that's where you get to make the change in your life at that little portion, right? Like Bobby works with me full time, but there's times I'm not around. There's times I'm traveling. There's times where he has open time, right? So he doesn't have a lot of time available, but he's got a little bit of time available. Now, if in that little bit of time available that he's got, if he can get on the phone and have 20 incredible conversations and then follow up with those people, he can get himself a deal in a, in a, in a month. I, I know that. And that deal on average right now in the United States is, is going to net you anywhere between ten dollars and $15,000. And if ten dollars to $15,000 right now in your bank would make a massive difference, then tuning in and staying here for the remainder of this video is incredibly important. Jenna, I, I'd love for us to uh, pull up the Dr. Deal Junkie platform because I think that um, what, what, what's been created here is not only look really useful, but I think we're going to be able to help people understand why it's so effective because what you guys have done differently from other providers of data is you've tapped into artificial intelligence. You've been able to use AI in a way that's not, you know, buzzword, catchphrase, like, you know, they took our job kind of things, like none of that. What you have done is created a, a, a platform that looks at the behavioral characteristics of human beings before they sell their property. And they've taken all of those characteristics, all of those behaviors that a person will do before selling a property, and they've stacked them on top of each other to create a scoring system that says, hey, this person is likely to sell their house in the next 90 days. So it's way more beneficial to my time to call that guy than it is to call this guy because he's got a 16% higher likelihood of selling than the next phone number. That to me is priceless. I think it went yeah. up to 17.2% now. It's so up to 17. Like, so 17.2% 17. more likely to sell than just calling your average high equity. Yeah, so we're we're going to have to change everything. <laughs> yeah. As and Jenna and Jamil, as a complete rookie, it's, it, I understand it's just like you get people's information and then you call them R briefly tell me like the old way of doing it and then show me quickly how to do it on deal junkie yeah so so the old way would be going to like you know your 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 let's just call it your generic list provider um we'll we'll, we'll use prop stream for example right so um you can go on to a platform like that and you can get what's called a high equity list the high equity list is typically most preferable for people in our business wholesalers because High equity means that there's that they have a low loan balance and that they are they're they're more likely to be negotiable on price because they have the ability to be negotiable. So you can get a good deal on a high equity list because if I've got no mortgage on my house and I want a quick sale and I just want to get it done and I agree to your terms and your price, well, hey, that's a that could be a great opportunity for a wholesaler. But here's the stats on that list. On a high equity list, one percent of that list is ready to sell. That's a grind. That's a grind, right? So typically on PropStream, you get every month for $99, which is what they charge, $99 a month. That does not include skip tracing, okay? For 99 bucks, you get a, a list of 10,000 names. Now you've got to skip trace that list. 
Okay, and that skip tracing is going to be around 15 cents a record. So that's going to cost you $1,500. But only 1% of that list is a potential sale. With Deal Junkie, 17.2% of the list that you pull is a potential sale. Mm -hmm. So it's 17.2 times more effective, meaning you've got to make one seventeenth the number of phone calls, meaning you spend one seventeenth the amount of money on skip tracing, meaning you spend one seventeenth the amount of time doing the job. Yeah. Right. And do you have to, with the list provider, they're doing the skip tracing. So Deal Junkie is also doing the skip tracing. Correct. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So we're, we're, so it's like, you know, when we're comping houses, we talk about comparing apples to apples. So I'm talking about the most juicy, red, luscious apple to a crab apple. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. This is the, the, so yes, it's still apples to apples. It's data and data. But which would you rather eat? Yep. So with that said, yeah. and it just so happens that you're wearing a red shirt with your red lipstick on today. So you, you are the juicy apple. Would well, you, you. <laughs> would you um, show us this uh, incredible platform, Jenna, and and dive into how we make this seventeen point two times more effective than just calling your regular list? I will. Is there one of you guys good with analogies? Like, I don't know if it's like a is it a Superman, a Spider Man, a Star Wars? Like, with the one like where it says something about like with every great power comes response like responsibility. That's Spider-Man, like I'm the worst, like with analogies. So I kind of feel like that's what this software is because like we have a window into people's lives because what you were talking about earlier, Jamil, when you were saying about how it studies trends and behaviors and patterns and like one of the things that we have really found is that history repeats itself. And if we, I mean, especially like as we can see the wave of economy and we won't take it down the political road. But as you can see, like every so many years, things are cyclical. And that's what we can predict with the software because we can see if, let's say that we have somebody in the past because we base it off of 40 years worth of education and knowledge and, and sales and things like that. But if we know that somebody in the past that had kids move away to college and they were a certain age and maybe somebody passed away, there was a certain time frame from that moment to the time that they ended up selling their house. And if we mm. can see that, over 40 years times however many people that were ever in that same situation, that only makes sense that we can predict that if we can pull that information on people of today and we can see that somebody's in that exact situation, that that means that they're going to sell and then uh, in the next upcoming days, let's say in the next 90 days. So that's the type of artificial intelligence that we incorporate. Like sometimes I laugh and I think like it's creepy, it's, you know, things like that, but really it's fascinating how we're able to do that because we can literally, we'll come in here to our, our left side navigation. We're going to go into our property leads in this area. This is almost like our own personal Google search for all nationwide properties. Like if you could come in here and say, give me all the people that are in a pre foreclosure scenario or give me all the people that are delinquent on their taxes or somebody who owns a property that they don't personally live in or somebody who lives out of state. Or what if we could see somebody who's owned their property for 25 plus years or in any of that information. And what if we could combine that with that artificial intelligence sprinkled on top? Like that is what sets it apart because now you're taking the sellability score and you're adding that onto the already distressed, motivated seller type of a list. And that's why I love that analogy because we have access to these people. Like, I mean, I think it's perfect, Jamil, like your story about how you were saying that you worked for that calling company or, you know, like the, you know, the, um, the collection agency, because we have an opportunity to call these people and we could really have the upper hand in a lot of these scenarios, but it comes down to making sure that you do what's right, what's ethical with all these different leads. And our goal is to help these people. So right. we can come in here, like let's put in a geographic location. So let's go to let's let's go to Los Angeles. Um, we'll go here. I'm I'm terrible at spelling. So where should we start? What Jamel, where, serious question? Where like if I get get on here and start calling, what where what city should I try? Do you think? I I think Florida. I see so many people doing Florida. Florida's great. Um, I but but um, I think that uh. 
any high appreciation, high demand market is going to have opportunity in it. How do I know what's a high appreciation, high demand market? Major city. Okay. Okay. So, um, uh, I like I like that she chose L.A. today because we're in L.A. today. True. Right. So, um, you know, if somebody wants to fight you, we can drive right over there. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, but um, I, I'm 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 not partial, or I don't I don't say or think that. You know, it's going to be easier in L.A. or easier in Florida than it's going to be in Phoenix or, or vice versa. Wherever you're going to sit down and put the effort is knowing that we have an unfair advantage of data here because we do know that by turning up the sellability score, by only pulling data where we have a high like a high sellability score, a high wholesale score, a high retail score, that tells us. That, that using the AI that Dr. Deal Junkie layers on top of that ec high equity list, that we are going to have lots of conversations today with potentially motivated people. Nice. So where are we now, Jenna? I, uh, like if I just, pull, just bought Deal Junkie and I open it for the first time, I just automatically go to where you went to the search on the, on the side on the left? Yeah. So, and, and kind of adding to what Jamil was saying on how do you pick a territory? I mean, I'm sure that he would work with you and tell you things like, you know, look in your own area, look at, but one of the main things that I do is I look at where the buyers are too. That's, and yeah, I thought about that. Like, how do I know where the buyers are? Can you do that in here too or not? I can, I can do that in here. <laughs> so it's, it's like oh, behind this, behind door number two. Um, yeah, <laughs> we can do all that. But one of the things I do is like, I mean, you can just basically go and research your market and then just figure out, are you in a seller's market? Are you in a buyer's market? Are people, are there more houses than people buying them? Are there not enough houses versus people buying them? And it's, I mean, and that's what's so powerful. Like anything, no matter where we go, it's like literally we could pack it up in a suitcase and we can carry it all across the country because I've said it before, like I'm in Pennsylvania, I'm doing marketing here, but I also know that I have a super, super strong group of buyers in the Rhode Island area in Providence. Now, if I go to like realtor.com or Zillow and I type in Providence, it's going to tell me that it's an unbelievable seller's market where the sellers are in control, where I have almost 60% of houses being sold over list price about six, they're on the market for about 16 days. But I researched that market to know that kind of stuff versus if I were, and my average house is going to be about $350,000. Now, if I go to Cleveland, my house is going to be less than $100,000. It flip flops. It's, it's not necessarily, it's kind of like a, an average market, but I know that houses will sit on the market longer and only about a third of them sell over asking price. So when you're looking across the country, it's important to know like, okay, where are my buyers? Like I know all day long that I have a buyer in Rhode Island. Plus she, she can buy in cash. She'll buy as many as I can get her. She knows all the different people that are all within all the RIA organizations. And she said the whole selling is like a three ring circus up there. So I'm going to focus there. But now whenever I come into the system and I can do that anywhere, like I've done marketing in Nashville, I've done marketing in Kansas, like you can, and I've done it in the Carolinas. It doesn't matter. It's just basically like, where do you have feet on the ground to be able to help you? But all that we're going to do is we're going to go into our left side navigation. I'm going to go into my lead pipes and then I'm going to go into my property leads. So this will take me into this section property. here. Yeah. So you can do it that way, or you can, from your main screen, you can just directly click here, property leads, just, you know, so I, that's like the direct way to do it. It's like that, that quick right. connect there. So, and, and wherever you want to focus, like you said, you had said uh, Florida, but we can look at Florida. We can look at LA because Jamil, I'd given you a list in, in LA. Like I know Jacksonville is a really hot area and that's an area that I would personally invest in, but I do know a lot of people that are investing in here. So yeah. when we come in here, we can basically see, okay, great. I have 301, 301,000 different properties. Like that's total overkill. Like, I mean, sure, I can direct mail all 301. I can cold call all of them and spend a good bit of money to be able to get all their contact information. But why would I do that if I have a way that I can basically like go pan for gold and sift through it and get the little nuggets on top? And then I didn't have to, you know, basically have to go through all the stuff manually on my own. And that's literally what the AI does. But in addition to the AI, we have all of our different lead types. So if I want to come in here and I say, I want all the people that are delinquent on their taxes, I can go right down here and narrow it down to 13,000 different people. 
But what if I added in the AI on top of that? Like, what if I said that I want all these people to be in a tough financial situation and not, not like to be morbid about it. I like the way I look at it is I'm trying to find them because they may be so frozen right now in their situation that they don't know what to do. They don't know where to turn. Like if anybody's ever been behind on things, or if we want to come in here, like, let's say we want to look at um, pre foreclosures. If anybody's ever been in a tough financial situation and your house is going to be taken away, like we're, we, we have to reach out to them because they're going to be petrified. Like everybody that's calling them or mailing them are probably all in their opinion, collection people like scamming them, trying to take advantage of them and yep. they don't know where to turn. And so if we could come in here and we could find them and we could be that person, like that, that heaven sent person to be able to say like, look, let's get you out of this situation. Like let's avoid this on your credit. How about I buy the property? We'll see what I can buy it for. What if I take extra money, put you in a new place, get you and your family situated? Like, and that's who the type of person that we're going to be. And I feel like when we kind of go into it with that energy, that's where we're going to have our success. I mean, like Jamil, like when you call these people different times, like knock on wood, like it's been like the first person or the first third person. Like just the other day, I was personally just called calling my own list. And it was the first person I called. The guy has four rentals he wants to sell. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel like Jamil. <laughs> like, I mean, because when you come at it with that kind of energy, it's just unbelievable. So right here, we have all these people that are delinquent on their taxes. And then what if we could take the AI on top of it? So you'll see we score them three different ways, retail, rental, and wholesale. So the retail number, this is basically how likely are we predicting that this person is going to sell that property more towards list price, like MLS listed on realtor.com kind of a price. What's and that on a scale of? So I see it's, it's like 523, 598, 297 for that first one. Is that big? It goes up to 1,000? Yeah. So it's zero to a thousand. A thousand is the best. And anything like if we're if we're like only looking at AI, like anything above a 500 is good, is worth marketing to. And, and depending on your area, like where I am in Pennsylvania or, or time, right? Like if you don't have a ton of time, though, you yeah. want to you want to use a higher score because let's just say you've only got an hour a day. Right. Then maybe calling 500 and above is still too many numbers for you. Right. Let's just say, OK, let's let's bump that to 700. Yeah, 700, 700 and above. How many how many listings are there now? Well, you I'm know? at 800 and there's still 710. Oh, wow. But but, yeah. but 710. Yeah. Think of that. Right. Yeah. Like that's 710 highly qualified people that you can call now instead of calling 310,000 people. Now you're only calling 710 people. Right. Which greatly reduces the amount of effort that you have to put into it. It greatly reduces the amount of time that you have to put into it. It greatly reduces the amount of money that you have to put into the data. So it makes your effectiveness 17.2 uh, times better. Yeah. How did it, how, did you push a button to make this AI do its thing? Like you, yeah. like you were talking about, so there you go. AI scores. You added yeah, that. So yeah. So you're just coming here. Data. And so the retail, this one is like, there's things that are going on circumstance wise, but it's not necessarily financially motivated, like rental score, pretty self-explanatory. Either the property is currently a rental or it's in a market where there's a lot of rental opportunity. And the one that we're going to be focusing on probably primarily is going to be that wholesale one. So we'll just come in here and we'll say, OK, system, give me all the properties that have a score of 800 and above. I remember a thousand is the best. And the reason I was saying anything above a 500 is worth marketing to just primarily in smaller markets like where I am in Pennsylvania. If I put in 800 and above, I may get four properties where I live just because I only have 6,000 people in my town. But so I may have to rely on a 600 score as my top. But if you're in these hot markets where you see there's a lot of properties, it's just a lot going on, you can go higher and higher. The higher you go, the higher that they're going to be likely to sell. And in different times, we may look at these people like because we can see stuff about them here. Like this person right here. We can see that they own their property free and clear. They bought it in cash, but they're delinquent on their taxes. I mean, like we understand that, but let, let, let me show you one thing here. Like let's take off the delinquent part and let's go really high with this. Like let's go to 900 and see what we get. 
and we can flip flop it. Like, let's make it to where the highest wholesale score number is first. So let me see like the thousands here, like almost. So we have people that have a score of almost a thousand. Now, sometimes when you look at these properties, like sometimes when you look at them, like they may be like, okay, they own it free and clear and they bought it in cash. Like, why are they on this list? Why do they have, have such a high wholesale mm -hmm. score? Because look at that on community road, right? Like, yeah. Oh my goodness. Look at, look at all the, look at all the Absentee factors. owner, cash buyer, free and clear, delinquent tax. And, and deceased in probate. Oh, wow. So like, what does this tell you? This tells you that, that there's a distress. Uh, it's in the massive distress, right? This property is in probate. They're back on, they're behind on taxes. They have no mortgage. They bought this in cash. So there's not going to be like any bank to have to deal with that. No mortgage to have to pay off. There's no minimum cash price that they're going to accept. So, and it's an absentee owner. I mean, they don't, they don't live here. So this right there is a phenomenal person to call. But you see like deceased probate. So how do we like, this may have been somebody who passed away and their family can't afford to pay the taxes. I mean, like you can almost like get out a crystal ball sometimes and tell people stories. But sometimes when we look at them, we don't know, like we can't see, like sometimes it will be like, like obviously this one's pre foreclosure. This one's a deceased probate, but sometimes like we may look at these people and they're obvious, but sometimes they're not like they may own it free and clear and that's it. And they bought it in cash. But what we can't see, because legally all that we can tell you <laughs> because of how invasive our information is legally, all that we can do is score them. But what we can't tell you is maybe these people are behind on their credit card payments. Maybe the main income generator of that household just passed away and we're able to figure that out. Or again, like kids are moving away to college or somebody has medical bills and they're struggling with it. Like you talked about how you worked next to a hospital. Like what about those people that are getting their cars, you know, tickets are impounded and now they have all those medical bills and now they can't pay their taxes and now they're on these lists. Like, and that's the thing like Jamil that like, I feel like really sets you apart because you have a lot of that that knowledge and like just real grit about your past to be able to relate to these people. I think that's why you do so well on these calls. And I love watching you cold call, but you're a real person calling real people and people buy and sell to people that they know, like, and trust. And that's the difference with you is that you're a real person. You're not like, I mean, I don't know how many times, like I'll, I'll call a number on a bandit sign because I think they're a local investor and it's some like company out of New York that doesn't even answer the phone that sends me to some like, you know, some site or something and they're so cold and they're like, just tell me how much you owe, send me pictures of your property. They're just so cold hearted. And like, what if, what if I was this person that I just inherited a property or somebody in my family just passed away and I don't have enough money to pay the taxes and it's going to be taken away from me. And I just don't know what to do. And I'm struggling. Like these are the people that we're reaching out to and we have an opportunity to do great things. Like, you know, we could come in here and we could say, you know, give me all the people that are in a pre foreclosure scenario. So we can say, give me all the people within the last, let's say three months that received a notice of default in that area, 115 people right here handed to you on a silver platter that are going through something that we can literally take this list. We'll select them. I'm not even sure Jamil, if you know that our skip tracing actually went down in price. I'm not sure if you saw that it's only 10 cents now. Wow. Um, yeah. And that is, that pierces the corporate veil. So we can get LLC contact information. We have it up and actually we, we ramped it up. So like we have up to a 90% success rate, a hit rate. Um, we scrub them now with the do not call list and the litigation list. So this is wow. like, we really like amped it since probably our last conversation, but it's only, we only have one option here and it's called lead trace. So I'll take this. And so you'll see here. So for 10 cents, we can get individuals, corporations, LLCs, trust. It's going to get you multiple phone numbers. You're going to get their relatives, you know, <laughs> like we can find their spouses, their children, their parents. And you can see here up to 90%. So we'll come in here. We can save them into our database here. And then we'll just go to continue. We'll agree to our terms and conditions. And so for $11.50, like you can't even, you probably can't even go and get one meal when you travel for that. Like you go to, I was just traveling and I went to Chick-fil-A and it's like $15. I'm like, when did a fast food meal like become $15? But for $11.15 or whatever it was, we could potentially call and change these people's lives. I, 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 I and I like, I just want to, you know, bring this back to the like relatability of this whole situation that Jenna's talking about, because 
you know, in 2008, right? I went broke. My all my real estate, you know, I was over leveraged on everything. I had a bunch of um, creative finance properties that I owned at the time that I couldn't debt service any longer. I everything I was losing everything. Not only did I lose everything, but I had my my family co-signed on loans that I was involved in. And so my parents were being foreclosed on as well. And so th these are some of the behaviors that I did in that time because my phone was blowing up of debt collectors calling me. Um, so I changed my phone number. Okay. I changed my mailing address. So I, I, I no longer lived where I was living. I changed my mailing address to another place. I was in financial distress because I was in default on my mortgages. In addition to that, I canceled all of my magazine subscriptions because I could no longer afford them. So my magazine subscriptions had had um, had had lapsed. And then in addition to that, I had just been in a car accident. And so I had broken my neck in a car in a car crash. Now, of course, this AI can't tell us, hey, Homeboy just got into a car accident, changed his phone number, canceled all of his magazine subscriptions, is um, changed his mailing address, and is in foreclosure. Call him. No, this didn't exist at that time. Mm -hmm. If somebody had called me at that time, I would have saved myself so much grief, so much heartache, so much financial loss because I just didn't know what to do. And because I was in such a bad spot, I just ducked my head in the sand. And when the sheriff came to take the house, they took the house. That was it. I lost it. I lost all of them. And I didn't have a Bobby Canode or a Jenna Hoover or a Jamil Damji calling me to say, hey, dude, I can help you out. Let's talk about this because you don't have to leave with a complete loss here. I can help you out of this situation. So that's essentially what we're talking about here is we're using AI to really get predictive on who's going to be a potential sale. And then we're bringing heart to that conversation so that we can genuinely help the people that we're wanting to talk to. Yeah. I hear it from people who ask me about wholesaling and they say, aren't you guys just lowballing people and screwing them over? And I said, no, like it, it, it's only good when everybody wins. And so this finding people who actually need the help to help them is pretty dope. Not only that, but also wouldn't you rather just call people that, you know you can help rather than just calling everybody. Yeah. Because then you're going to get yelled at less. You're going to get, you know, you're not going to spend as much time. It's just overall, in my opinion, just a, a, a way better situation. But I, I'm, you know, rather than us just talking about it, how do you feel about getting on the phone? Let's do it. Okay. So Jenna, because we are in LA, I think it's a good idea for us to to go in LA. Um, there's a there's a few zip codes that I like. I like. Do you want me to tell you the zip codes or where, where should how should we start this? Well, do you want me to just show you the the list that I pulled for you? Yep. Yep. Okay. So what I did is I came in here and I just put in Los Angeles. I, it took me a couple times to spell it, but I feel like if you spell it the same every time, you just lack creativity, in my opinion. <laughs> um, <laughs> There we go. There's yeah. So I went into Los Angeles, California. And then what I did is I came in and I believe that I did an AI score of 700 and above. So I came in here and I did 700 and above. And let me clear out this list here, because once you skip traces, like let's imagine we skip traces, we always want to make sure that we reset it because this is almost like our shopping cart. And if we don't clear it out and I add new ones and I go to skip trace those, it's going to skip trace whatever was in my my leads or my shopping cart. So I came in here. So I think I did a score of 700 and above. I did one where I did delinquent taxes. So I had, you can see here, there's about like 145 people. Also, what I did is I did individual owners and I, I think that's what I did. Maybe I didn't do individuals owners. Um, or maybe I did. <laughs> Let me see exactly what I did. Um, I, I sent it all to you guys here, but I, I think that's what I did. So, um, so I came in here and I did that. So I focused on on that type. Oh no, no, what I did here. Let me get out of here. I think I may have focused only on 
single, single family. family. Yep. There we go. Okay. So I may have focused on single family and I did an AI score of the, um, with delinquent taxes. So I did a score of 700 and above and I did delinquent taxes. And then I also did a separate one where I got rid of the taxes and I focused on pre foreclosures. So that was about a hundred on that list. And so there was about close to about 200 people that I sent you. So we know that they have a high AI score. They're in your Los Angeles area. Um, half of them will be delinquent on taxes. Half of them are going to be in a pre foreclosure scenario. And I think Bobby, like the, the most fascinating part, like the part that like, I'm sure everybody's envious of you about is that first off you're learning from like the greatest here, but you're going to be able to see exactly what he says. You can, I mean, you're going to learn so much from Jamil because the things like this is the part that scares people about real estate. Like it's not so much about investing in themselves or investing in a software. It's this part. It's a scary phone call part. But really, it's it's no different from making any phone call. I always say, you know what? They can't take your birthday, <laughs> you know, no matter what happens. They can't take your birthday. Like I love the cold calling part. I think it's like super fun and exciting. But this is the part that scares people. And that's where clinging on to a strong mentor like Jamil for him to be able to handhold you and say, this is what I would say, or here's how I'm going to say this, you know, because here's the thing, like a lot of people, they'll just go and call people. And then the moment they get somebody that says, how do you get, how did you get my information? They freeze because they're like, uh, I bought a list of people that couldn't pay their mortgages and you were on it. Like, oh, wow. Way to just build rapport and credibility right there. You just, yeah. I'm sure you're going to cl clinch that deal. So, I mean, just hearing some of the things that he says, like, that's why these calls are so important for everybody to be on first off to just selfishly, you know, hear everything you have to say, but just to learn about like, what about this objection or what if somebody asked this? So yeah. what's, the you know, objection? what's the rebuttal to that? Well, how'd you, how'd, how'd you get my phone number? Yeah. Well, it depends on the situation, right? So um, let's just say, for instance, I'm calling somebody who is behind on taxes. Well, somebody who's on, who's behind on taxes, they typically come up on like a tax lien um, uh, scenario. So you can actually buy that tax lien. And I know this, right? You can buy a tax lien and I can foreclose. I can buy. Say, let's just say you didn't pay your property, your, your taxes. I can buy your tax lien. And if you don't pay that tax in a certain amount of time, I can foreclose on your house because I bought that tax lien. So these people are in jeopardy of losing their property to an investor who bought their tax lien. And so I'm just calling to A, inform them that that's the reality here. And if you tell them, you say somebody could have bought your tax lien or somebody did. No, you're, you're beca because there's a there's a note here that your property is behind on taxes. There's a likelihood that there's an investor right now trying to buy your tax lien to foreclose on your property. And so rather than do that, because I think that's just a terrible surreptitious way to obtain ownership of a property, I just wanted to call you. And there's a website that I can go. I just put your your information in and I can get your phone number. And that's that's how I got your phone number. So I did a little bit of research, but rather than just do this, like, you know, in a way where I, you know, came in through the back door, you didn't even know that I was, you know, trying to purchase your home and I was going to do it in a way where I foreclosed on you. And all of a sudden you're just like, what happened to me? I'm just calling you as a human being asking, can I help? That's fire. What about not tax lien situation? Um, give me a scenario. So I was if, thinking about like, a, a, it might be a good rebuttal to be like, I was driving around the neighborhood, but, but I don't want to lie. Yeah. Right. Like that's, that's the, the, one of the things is you when you paint yourself into a web of lies, people will start asking you questions and they'll start figuring it out. And then you 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 look scammy. You look like somebody who's not honest. I want to be as truthful about my I want as as I can possibly be in this without creeping people out. Yeah. Right. So so that's the approach. Right. It's like I'm 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 look, I I, I do research. This is what I do for a living. So I'm 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 I research this information. I spend time and money on this information, but because I have a heart, because I've been in this circumstance myself in the past, I'm not going to come after this. I'm not going to, I'm not going to approach this from the back door in a sleazy way. I'm actually just going to call you person to person and see, is there an opportunity for me to help? And if not, you know, have a, have a wonderful day. God bless you. And if there is, let's talk about it. Yeah. Do you think people were less paranoid about how did you get my information back when we had phone books? Because it's like we used to get delivered everybody's phone numbers to our door 
Like, mm -hmm. so everybody's like, how'd you get my information? I don't know. Remember phone books? Well, we have it like in the world of Google. Like I can put in your name. You used to prank call people from the phone book? Oh yeah. And you're like, is your refrigerator running? <laughs> yeah. So there was a guy in, um, in Calgary where I grew up. I'm repping Canada today hard. Um, but um, there, is a, there is a guy in Calgary, last name Pecker, first name <laughs> Holding. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm not joking. I, look, I can't make this up. Last name Pecker, first name Holding. I probably prank called this guy twice a month. <laughs> Are you Holding Pecker? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> poor guy. Yeah, I would laugh my ass <laughs> off every single time I'd call this dude. I just he was he, he but he no he could do nothing <laughs> because his every year his phone number would be in the phone book. Every single year. And he changed his number often. But every year his phone his new phone number would be in the phone book and I'd be like, I got you, Mr. Pecker. <laughs> so Jamil's answer was amazing with the tax lien. I like that line a lot. And I don't think the uh, how did you get my number? Objection happens like a high percentage of time, but when it does, what was Jenna? What was your answer last time somebody asked you that? I mean, if I'm just calling in my area, I'll say, you know what, I'm really passionate about my area, and and I I'll, I'll let them know that I buy houses. So I'll say, you know, I buy houses in the area, and I'm really passionate about purchasing another one. And what I did is some research on some different people who happen to own properties in the area, and I sent you all a letter. Or I con or I'm contacting you now, depending if it's direct mail or if it's skip tracing. But I'll say, so do you have any interest in selling your property? And if they're like, no, I'll say, well, no for now or no forever. And if you know, they'll kind of chuckle and usually breaks the ice and things like that. But I'll say, well, do you know of anybody else like maybe on the same street? Because I'm really looking for something in that neighborhood. Do you know of anybody else? And I've had people where, where it's like older ladies. They're like, well, I know my friend and the White House on the corner. She's looking to sell. I've heard her talking about it. Like, don't I mean, I. I don't want to say don't get off the phone without something, but don't get off the phone with just a no, like get off the phone with like, you've asked them, you've, you really cared about them. You've asked about the neighborhood, but just be real. Like, you know, I mean, I don't call it, like, I don't say, well, <clears throat> I got a list of people that are in pre foreclosure and luckily you're on that. Well, no, if it was a <laughs> list that I picked in my area, then it's because I want properties in that area. So I send, so I'm, I'm reaching out to some different homeowners in the area just in hopes. And also like when I call people in Rhode Island, like I'm looking at, you know, for properties that are close to my friends. So I'll say that, you know, I have a friend that's in the Smithfield area in Rhode Island and I'm looking for properties that are close to her, which is totally true because so she can buy them, but they'll be like, oh, well, I know now. I mean, I just had a house. I called the guy about a house in Rhode Island, but he had had one in Florida in the Naples, close to the Naples area that he wanted to sell me. I'm like, hey, sure, I have a friend that's down there. So don't get off the phone until you actually have some some kind of something or at least a definite no with no options, but at least you've tried asking. Yeah, I love that. And uh, it sounds like it might be wise to kind of narrow in on an area so that you can use that and be honest, like choosing a specific zip code. Jamil, what, like, we picked some zip codes for today. Why did you pick these zip codes that you picked? Um, the specific ones, there's just areas of high investor activity here in LA. Um, but the list that, that Jenna sent me is, wasn't a, a zip code specific. It was, it was situationally specific. So in the greater Los Angeles area, it was in so the greater Los okay. Angeles area individuals and single families, individuals, single family tax delinquent and, or, um, notice of default. And yeah. so that, that's, who, that's who we're calling. So that's going to be spread out all across the all across greater LA. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much cool. it. Yeah, I just take the I'll try the objections when they come. OK, yeah, we'll see. Um, guys, if you're watching this right now and you're like, my goodness, this just sounds like the greatest thing since sliced bread. How do I get my hands on it? In the description of this video is going to be a link to sign up for Dr. Deal Junkie. I highly recommend it. Um, I, just in terms of cost, I want you guys to be fully aware of, of you know, how this shakes out. So let's just say, for instance, you're using a platform like PropStream. You pay the $97 a month for it. You download the 10,000 leads. You pay 15 cents for skip tracing. That's $1,500, okay? You, you're not going to get a deal on the first list. You're going to need to get two lists, typically, because there's only a 1% chance of anybody on that list in a situation where they want to sell. So now double that. So now you're at $3,000. Now, of course, 
how many calls are you going to have to make? How many no's? How many callbacks? How much of that are you going to need to do before you, be, you get a contract? Typically, it takes 60 to 90 days of following up before that results in a contract, right? So you're thousands of dollars in. Very, right now, the standard across the United States, if we're cold calling people, going direct to seller, the standard average cost per contract is roughly anywhere between $3,500 to five dollars or $6,000, depending on the market, per contract, okay? That's a lot of money for one deal. So you better be making ten, fifteen thousand dollars on your assignment fee. Otherwise, it's not really going to make sense. In this platform, Deal Junkie, it, it, there it's nine hundred and ninety-seven dollars to get the system. Okay, that covers you for the entire year. So there's no monthly fee after that. Ne year two, it goes to ninety-seven dollars a month. But right now, for the year, you're totally paid up. Okay, so it's nine hundred and ninety-seven dollars. You're paid up for the entire year. If you look at PropStream at $97 a month, okay, times that by 12, you're already at 1200 bucks. So this shakes out less expensive than what PropStream was going to cost you. PropStream has no AI. PropStream's skip tracing is not even remotely comparable in hit rate to what we got here. So the real question is, what's your cost per contract? Because we know that we're 17 times more effective. You can, let's just take the, let's take the lower of that number, okay? Let's just say your cost per contract is 3,500 bucks. You divide that by 17.2. $203. That's what your average cost per contract will shake out to using the power of AI. And you're going to spend a dramatic less amount of time than you would if you were doing it the other way. Mm -hmm. So, so, the real question is, if you're sitting here looking at this and saying, if you're holding PropStream or you're holding Batch or one of these other platforms that charges you $97 a month for direct-to-seller lists, you got to ask yourself, A, why, why, why am I holding on to an inferior product, first and foremost? Secondly, if it's because you're, you're like, I don't want to make that investment, you're not, it's not about the investment. You're not, about, you're not scared to, to spend the $997. What you're really saying is, I don't think I'm going to do it. I don't think I'm going to do it. And then that, that, that begs a different question. Why do you think you're not worth it? Why do you think you're not worth it to put the time in? Why, do you, like, what, why are you so addicted to the comfort of your existing situation, your existing financial situation, which is not going to change if you keep doing the same thing? If you do the same thing that you did yesterday, today, then tomorrow is going to be the exact same day as today. That's a fact. It, nothing can change if you don't change. If you do the same things every single day, you will have the same experience day after day after day after day. That is just reality. That's just how the world works. How we change our situations is by changing a behavior. How we change a behavior is by making a decision that Today, I'm going to disrupt the pattern. Today, I'm going to insert a behavior into my life that's different than yesterday. I'm going to do this. And here's another thing. I want to point this out, guys. And for all of you people holding that $97 a month recurring fee on your credit card, and you don't do anything with it, because I know there's, I know there's going to be a few thousand of you watching this video who I'm talking to right now. The reason why you don't cancel it, the reason why you're not canceling that $97 is because there's a hope. There's a glimmer of hope that tomorrow you're going to wake up and you're going to do something different. Tomorrow, there's going to be that glimmer of hope that you're going to change your behavior. And so you keep that recurring billing happening because you're like, one day I'm going to get it together. One day I'm actually going to make the change. One day I'm going to believe in myself enough to actually get up and do something different. Okay. But you still don't do it. You still don't do it. I think that when you, when you put yourself in that uncomfortable situation of making that investment up front, because that's all this is. It's actually less a month than $97 a month, right? Because if you take $9.97, you divide that by 12, we're actually $83 a month, not $97 a month, if you think about it, in terms of monthly. But if you look at it from that point of view, okay, when you put that $9.97 up front, 
Now you're saying to yourself, I'm not going to let another flipping day pass me. I just made this investment in myself. I'm going to show up. I'm going to do the work. Straight up. I, I, that's how I am about it. If, I'm, if I know I'm making this investment, I better get my money's worth. I better show up for myself and make these damn calls. So that's just how I feel about it. If you're sitting there watching and you're like, ah, I just don't know. Well, you just don't know about yourself. But, you know, that's the reason why we didn't do this live. I want you right now, if you're watching this, pause it, go click on the link, download Dr. Deal Junkie, and then come back and watch us call. We can make calls together. We make calls together. All right. So if you've just done that, congratulations. You are, you've taken that first step. I love you. You're great. We should make some calls now. Jenna, are you ready for a show? I'm ready. Bobby, are you ready to show? Yeah. With these, when you give them to me, what information do I want to know when I'm cold calling somebody? Well, we want to know their name. We want to know the address that we're calling on. And um, beyond that, there's not much we need to know because we already know that they're in default on their taxes or they're in default on their payment. Okay. So we already know that there's financial distress. I'm not going to bring that up right out the gate because I'm not trying to rub salt on people's wounds. Okay. But I already know because I've got the upper hand in knowledge that, that, the, that the people that I'm calling right now have a, have a need. They have a financial need and I'm here to solve a problem. Yeah. So I'll Should make we... a couple of calls out the gate. I, Go I ahead, Jenna. Um, now, do you notice a big difference between how your calls go when you call them versus when they call you from your marketing and want to sell a house? Like, do you feel like you have more of an opportunity when they're calling you versus you're the one like flailing in the water when you're calling them? Because we're almost like that stranger telemarketer in their mind. So, of course, when somebody's calling you, they pick up your postcard and they call you, right? That's a hot lead, right? Because they're you know, they've, they've, they've made the call, they've made a decision. Um, but here's, there's a, there's an inherent risk there. I, I feel at least they're not only calling you, they're calling a number of other postcards that have shown up in their mail. And so you are now in competition with five or six other investors who are going to be bidding you up. I like the cold calling aspect of it a little bit more than I like the inbound sending out direct mail first. It's cheaper, right? Cause I don't have to send out mail. But second, I can get ahead of it. I can get in front of that conversation where I'm not having to compete against five other investors that this person is shopping my offer against. So I actually prefer, even though I'm, I'm kind of swimming in this, like, in this like ocean of like, I'm by myself. I don't know if you want to sell or not. I do know that by, based on the predictive information on the AI that you have a need. But I like to be, I like to be front of the pack. I'm You're alpha. You're a yeah. hunter, huh? He's, he, Bobby's beta. I'm, I'm alpha. Sigma. I'm Sigma. <laughs> Do you know what, what he's? You know what Sigma is, Jenna? <laughs> I've heard of it, but I don't know what he's referring to as in this. She, she knows what's up. Do you know what Gat is? Gat. What? Okay. Yeah. She, she doesn't know. No. G Y A T. I'm yeah. not gonna tell you. Is it like probably, bad? Is it a bad uh, thing, or is it I like mean, a? It just means that you got that butt. You got that gat. Oh. Yeah, and I, know. I like to stay in, in touch with what the kids are saying. Oh man! Yeah, yeah. He, he 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 clued me in on a lot of these yesterday. I was just shocked. I was like, "How do you know all these terms that children use, Bobby?" So when you cold call, you just go, "What's up? You got to get." <laughs> Is that how it works? Yeah, I bet no. you would clinch a lot of <laughs> listings that way. But yeah, we're like, gonna know their name. We're gonna know their phone number. So the main thing is just seeing if they have a desire to sell. And if they do, if we can get their nut, like how much they want to sell it for, why do they want to sell it and how quick If we can get those three main things. We're golden. Nice. We're golden. Yeah. There's pillars, motivation. Time limit. Condition. Hey, is James there? Yes. What can I help you with? Uh, James, hi. My my name is Jamil. I'm, I apologize for disturbing you today, but I'm I'm calling about the property on Fourth Avenue in LA. Are you still the owner of that? No, this is a Domino's Pizza. Oh, I apologize. Sorry. Have a good day. Yeah. I don't know if I 
believe yeah, that because he didn't yeah, answer Domino's Pizza. Yeah, but, yeah, I think but that was a lie. I, he wasn't he wasn't interested in calling, so I'm not going to waste time. Just going to keep it going. Roberto is who I'm calling next. Yeah, Domino's. He you said James. <laughs> yeah, James. It's a good line. I should call him back and be like, "Hey, can I get uh, pepperoni?" <laughs> Should we call him back? <laughs> I'll do stuffed crust. You need to order pizza. But at least it was a good number and the right person. Yeah, it was the right, yeah. good number, right person. To voicemail. The person you're trying to reach is not available. I just, I do love the fact that these are like actual, like good numbers. You know, like that is that is the hardest part about this. That like truly is the hardest part. Like just making sure that you've got the right the right people. Oh, you know what? This thing, it, it went up a little bit. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, can I talk to Katerino? Who's calling? Uh, my name is Jamil. From where? I, I'm I'm here in LA. Yeah, I, for, for, oh, okay. I I sorry. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, this is Katerino. Yeah, where are you calling from? I, I'm I'm calling about the house that you have on 76th Place there in LA. Uh, okay. Just wondering if if you had any thoughts of potentially selling that house in the next you know couple of months. I'll let you know. I have your number here. Okay, um, uh, Caterino, I thank you for answering that question. Honestly, is there a, a time that you think I should follow up with you? I'm, I'm, I'm desperately looking for something in that neighborhood, and so. Yeah. I, mean, I got your number. I haven't decided. I'll let you know. You have a number. So if I decide, I'll keep your number in your records, and I'll let you know. Okay. Okay. I, okay. I, I appreciate that. Is it okay if I All followed right. back up with you in a couple weeks? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. That's. I That's mean, pretty good. It looked too easy, Jamil. That was my third call. That's crazy. He says I'm thinking about it. So, like, okay, let's 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 just de deconstruct that for a moment. He was not interested in continuing this call right now. He's in the middle of his day. It's a Friday. It's a Friday afternoon. But he said yes. Maybe he's working, yeah. but he said yes. I am thinking about it. So the AI worked, right? The AI worked. So the predictive indicators that told us that Caterino might be in a situation where he would want to sell this house actually is real, okay? Now, he didn't want to talk right now. I could see that. My emotional intelligence said, get off the phone with this guy. Don't piss him off. But get permission to follow back up with him. Now, Caterino is a hot lead. He is going to sell in the next 90 days, guaranteed. Guaranteed. What else do I know from the information that he told me? That he saved my number and that he probably has a few other numbers or maybe some postcards that he's going to be calling back on. So I have to, have to, have to make sure that I follow back up with him. Now, when would I follow up with Caterino if we're going to talk about timing? I know that he's working in the middle of the day right now. There's no chance that, that, that he, was, he was in the middle of something. He was busy. I'm probably going to call him back on maybe a Thursday or Friday, five or six o'clock at the end of the day. Maybe he's got a couple Coronas in him. He's a little looser. He's in a little bit of a better mood and I can have an honest conversation with him. But this right there is what I would classify hot, hot lead. Boom, boom. It's so crazy how fast this happens when we do this though. Like we've okay, had some so wild calls on these things. For everybody that's watching this right now, I mean, I've I I, I dialed four numbers. Okay, the first guy was a Domino's Pizza. Okay, the <laughs> second, which he wasn't, it was actually him. The second one went to voicemail. Um, the third one didn't. Uh, I I I actually called the wrong state, so I that didn't even count. So I was in my third call. I get Caterino interested in selling his house. Hot lead. Now, if you were if you were paying a cold caller, this would be worth an entire day's worth of work. 
most times when you pay a VA to cold call for you, if they gave you one hot lead a day, that VA would be worth their weight in gold. Hands down. Hands down. Let's keep calling. Now, while you're calling the next one, do you ever test and track saying their name versus not saying their name? Like, do you ever say, hey, this is Jamil, and then get into your pitch, or do you always say their name? Um, I, I typically say their name, but let's try it another way. Because I've been trying to test and track that. Okay, let's do it. Make sure you put this end up to the mic. There you go. Hello? <laughs> so I just have different friends and they're like, well, what I do is I don't even ask for them anymore. I just basically say, hey, this is Jamil and I'm calling about, or hey, this is Jamil and I wanted to know about your property. Your message for three, one, zero, eight, zero. Seems like there's no right or wrong way. It's kind of whatever you get into the group and be comfortable with. Yeah, whatever whatever feels natural to you. Yeah. Here. I'm just saving every question that I've had for him. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. We we'll have to order a pizza. Then. What's your favorite toppings? Pepperoni. Pepperoni. Correct number. I'm going to leave him a message. Don't forget to meet your number. Sorry, mailbox is full. To send an you SMS are not leaving a message. Not leaving a message. But let's text him. That was going to be one of my questions. Like you, these other numbers, you can text. So what's What's, what's the, I guess it's just the amount of effort, but you can not cold call and you could just cold text all these people. When you first started, Jamil, what hours were you doing calling when you were just grinding at the beginning? 10 hours a day? Um, I would call, my, my favorite time of day to call is between the hours of 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. That's just my, I'm an early riser. So that's just kind of how I rock, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think that um, the so best time of day to call is the time that you're actually going to call. How many hours did you used to do? A few hours a day. A few? Yep. Yep. Three? Yep. Three hours a day. Lord. I like the one time that we were calling and somebody told you to get a job. Get a job. <laughs> that was a great one. I think if, if when I'm doing this, I, I'm just going to record every single one because you never know when the the gold would come. And it of makes course. it more fun. It makes it like Absolutely. people are with you doing it. Sorry. I'm Because I'm doing this from my cell phone, which is like not the most efficient way to do this. What it's, do you, um, yeah, what are you supposed to do? Besides? I would use a dialer or... Um, you know, this just that my preference would be that. But so what would be that workflow if I wanted to use a dialer? I get Deal Junkie. How do I set myself up with a dialer? Do you have one? Well, I know use? that uh, Deal inside? Junkie is going to be um, uh, coming out with a dialer here in the next like 60 days. So That's you'll cool. be able to just use it in the platform and upload it and dial. Um, you could you could use Mojo Dialer, which is a pretty inexpensive alternative. Um, in my opinion, just, you know, get the a standard Mojo Dialer and upload the Dude. I've been getting phone calls um, with where I answer, I say hello, and then it waits three seconds, and then I hear a bloop, and then I know it's a like something. Does that happen when you use dialers? Is that is that if you're a using dialer? a triple line dialer? Yes. Yeah, a triple line. Dialer. So a triple That's line or a, or even a five line or a ten line dialer is dialing ten numbers at the same time, and then when you're available, it it gives you the call. But the problem with that is that if 
it's dialing nine people and seven of them answer, it's going to hang up on seven of them. And then you're only talking to the one. And so like those other people just got hung up on by your phone number, which isn't always the best thing. So I don't necessarily like to use anything better, anything more than a three line dialer, but even just a one line dialer, in my opinion, is just That's absolutely one, perfect. Yeah. Um, do you know, Jenna, our dialer that we're going to be putting into Deal Junkie here is, do you know how many lines it's going to be? The standard is one, but you can get more. And and I've used it. I'm beta testing it. And I've called my friends and my family and they didn't even know. They're like, why are you calling me from a Rhode Island number? Like, that's the only thing that they said, because you'll go in there and you'll pick your number. So you can pick like a Rhode Island number if you're calling your Rhode Island people, or you can pick a line that's, you know, wherever you're local so that you kind of fit in. Nice. Um, Bobby, how do you feel about making a call? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. This guy's name is Brandon. Okay. <clears throat> are you going to? Uh, I can use my phone. You can use your phone, yeah. yeah. Number. Brandon. Is this your first call ever? Like, is this like the moment that we're... Yeah, we're this is that moment. He's, oh. he's... Fifth Avenue. Okay. Keep going. Okay, no Brandon. Magdalena. Magdalena. The universe gave you a little pass right there. <laughs> Big deep breath. <sighs> okay. <laughs> they can't take your birthday. <laughs> For those of you that uh, are unaware, Bobby, Bobby, when Kevin he gets Omer. nervous, he farts, and so he's, <laughs> he's farting right now. Magdalene, Magdalena, three, two, three, seven. No, Magdalena, but it was a good number. Just Alexander didn't answer. Haas. It's restricted. Manuel. Manuel. 209. I almost said the whole thing out loud. Oh, that's weird. It's like Colin, but let's keep moving. Yeah. Well, let me try that one again. Yeah, because most people think you'd spend like forever on this. <laughs> Going right through them. Manuel. Yeah. I'm sorry, but the son of a gun. Let's just try Deborah. I um when I was 17, a 40 year old woman named Deborah had just gotten divorced. <laughs> And um, um, she. Is this like a Fifty Shades of Grey story? Yeah, a little bit. It was. Like a red room. I'll never forget Deborah. Hopefully, Deborah's watching. Hi, Deborah. It's me. <laughs> it's me. She was rich. She lived in a penthouse. Wow. Yeah. How old was she and how old were you? She was 40. I was uh, just turned just turning 18. So you were a kid, huh? I was a kid, yeah. And <clears throat> she just had gotten separated from her husband and was just out prowling for a, a young distraction and i was it i was him oh that's that's nice for you <laughs> it was actually Good. into the penthouses i loved it she would never let me stay over though she used to throw me out because she knew you had to school the next morning <laughs> <laughs> i was saying too much it was on a school night You're learning Spanish now, aren't you? I, I mean, I, I want to. I I should. I didn't realize how much California speaks Spanish. Like, I was out in San Diego, and I was like, I don't understand anybody. <laughs> Miami is worse. Oh, really? I've never been there. I want to go so bad. Nobody speaks English in Miami. Nobody speaks English in Miami. They're all dancing anyways, right? I just feel like it's all party scene. 
Like I want to go so bad. Oh, Jenna, we, I, you should go with me. I've never been to Miami and I want to go so bad. I've, I like, I've only ever been to like a dance club pretty much once. Like when we were out in Vegas that time, that was like only really I've ever been to like a club. Please leave your message. Did you have fun? Three. Kind of, but I'd never, like, I didn't know what to expect. And I'm all like the awkward robot in the room because I'd never, like, you know, I'm like from like, like Amish town here. Like we have horses that go, go by. That's basically That's it. That makes me the greatest though. Yeah. See, sometimes when it's your first time calling, it's good when they don't answer like the right first moment. Yeah. Because also, we're, it is Friday at noon, so that's like um, the the fact that we're getting voicemails right now is pretty indicative of the time of day. That's why I do like the morning or I do like the early evening because um, it's just more hits, you know? I was calling people the other night at 9 p.m. just to see. And How'd it go? Actually, it went really well, but then there were some that were sleeping, yeah. clearly. I think they were too tired to be mean. Just move on. This person's name is Dijon. Like the mustard. Yep. Maybe this is DJ Mustard. You think DJ Mustard's Dijon? Dijon. Dijon. Yeah. Dijon. That's how you're gonna say it. Hopefully you get to say it. Hello. Hey, is this Dijon? No, it's not. Okay. Uh, I'm. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, it, that was Dejan. That was Dejan. But they were just like, they're like, no, I know why you're calling. You want my money? You're, you're collecting some bills. So now, would you call? Is that a girl? Was that a girl? I wasn't sure. You know, and, and yeah, your message it was. Um, it was a. Uh, um, would you Would you call Dejan back? Depends. I mean, that you know, a, a hang up is like a clear indication of like not wanting to chat right now. So I wouldn't take them off the list. I would call them tomorrow or the day after or whatever. Right. I just wouldn't, I wouldn't strike them off as a, like not interested, but I would definitely call them again at a different time to just, you know, For see if I had a, yeah, caught a different mood. I feel wild. I'll call them back and be like, I think we got disconnected. They're like, no, I'm, not I'm like, Oh, really? <laughs> Shannon or Trudy. Trudy. The first name is first. Yeah. Yeah. After, after a few rings, yeah. let's just keep pushing because I really want you to have a phone call. I really, I, I want to hear Bobby. I want to hear how he goes. They don't, they don't, they don't know. He's like one of the most famous BMXers in all of. Hey, is this a zip code that's here? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. They don't know I'm a big deal. They don't know. Mm -hmm. you know next trick on for you. Yeah. Like when the guy told you Jamel to get a job, he didn't know who he was talking to. I got lots of jobs. I bet it's. I, bet I got it's, six jobs. I don't I get tired. Song. You know that song? That's a song? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have dance clubs to listen to it. So no, I don't know it. <laughs> Minerva. You're getting on my last Minerva. You're getting on my. You're on my. You're right. You're, you're just about to hit my last Minerva. <laughs> so I did way better than you, Bobby. Yeah, you my 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 third call, I'm like, boom. He's just it's 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 he's putting that nervous energy out right now. Get he's just the like, hell out of here. <laughs> you should see his leg right now, all the farts that are going on. It's just it's crazy. It's he needs to like shake it out. out. It's, it's a movement, aren't it, Ramon? Maria. When you when you when this one person's called when you answer this person answers goes Maria Maria okay. you remind me of a West Side Story okay oh, I don't know the lyrics growing up in Spanish Harlem you remember that you look just like a movie star yeah, hey there he goes okay you sing the next line I'm hey, sorry you, you got a belt oh, oh. I don't know the next no. line. Maria, Maria. That was the next line. It was the easiest yeah. one. Oh. <clears throat> I'm Judy. This is Judy Lawson, possibly Judge Judy. Oh. Big booty Judy. 
Texas, Big Booty Judy. You got that yet. Keep pushing. All good numbers, just working. So if you're tuning into this on YouTube, we, sh we shot this Wireless on Friday carrier. at noon. So, you know, just that happens. So pick a time that's appropriate instinctually for you. But what's Please most press important one to claim your subsidy. Is that you're, is, is the most important thing is that you're calling when you have the time to do it. That's the most important thing, I think. It's just pick a time where you're actually going to sit your butt down and make it happen. Hello. Hi, David. Yeah, who's calling? My name's Bobby. I'm calling. Do you still own your house on 54th Street? Yeah. I'm calling to see if there's any chance you'd be interested in selling that in the next couple of months. Mm, I don't know. For the moment, man, right? Chilling now? No, not right now. Yeah. Maybe they follow you. But it's possible. So if I tried you yeah, again in a couple months, you yeah, wouldn't be Yeah, I tried again there. in six months, something like that. I'm going to fix it really good. I'm going to make some my H2, H2 a little extension. I'm going to remodeling and everything. Cool. Well, yeah. yeah. Later, we'll see what happens. All right? Yeah, I appreciate you, David. Have a good day. Bye. Wow. That's, bro. You good. But, but, but here's the, the beautiful thing. He talked to David, and David was interested in selling his house. It's not not in the next six months, right? That's I mean, that's a medium hot lead. That's like Frank's, like that's Frank's hot sauce hot lead. That's that not. Was so good. Like, he was so good at like how you like mirrored him, like you were getting like a little twang to your yeah chilling or whatever you said. <laughs> like you were so good. Chilling right yeah. now. Okay, I got you. Yeah. All right. Um, you want to keep In, going? Invigorating, yeah. Let's do. Yeah, you feel like calm minutes. and cool. I'm actually super proud of him. That, that was a that was a that was a, a great Virginia call. I she couldn't even understand what he said when he. He said he's going to do some remodeling and maybe oh, he's going to okay, build an extension. Yeah. You know, Valdez. That's. Mm, I'm Valadez. just going to go with the address on this one. I'm going to go Jenna style. No. Hi there. My name is Bobby. I'm calling to see if you're still owning that property on 2551 on Chelsea Street. Mm, you got the wrong number. I'm sorry. Is this Valadez? No. Okay. I'm, I apologize. Do you do you own a home? Do you want to sell a home? No, I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. That's cool. Thank you. Have a good day. She was. She sounded cute. You're like a born salesman. Like I. I want to. I want to get a house in LA just to sell it to you <laughs> he's, so good. Really he's really good he's so chill he's just like hey but the fact that he knew to follow it with that like on his first couple calls like that's like yeah, you own a home but do you own a home <laughs> do you know anybody who has one? <laughs> what are you doing later <laughs> <laughs> want to have sushi <laughs> no we're having dominoes <laughs> before we end today i'm going to call that guy back and order a pizza <laughs> yes let's do that after this one <laughs> End, guys. <laughs> Come on, B. I'm proud of you, bro. Thank you. So, so for all of you newbies who are scared, you should. You, I mean, look at this, right? He's he's. Just doing his best. I seem calm, cool, and collected, but I'm shaking. Uh, hey, is this Tommy? Who is this? My name's Bobby. I, um, I'm just calling to see if you're still in your house on 49th Street. Yes, I do. Nice. Um, so I'm curious what the chances are that you'd be interested in selling that in the next couple of months. None. Zero, huh? None. That's a no now or a no forever? No for now. No forever. <laughs> oh, you almost got me. <laughs> No forever. All right. Well, I appreciate it. I won't take any more of your time. Do you know anybody else who owns a house that maybe wants to sell one? No, I don't. Okay. I appreciate your time, Tommy. Mm -hmm. All right, bye. bye. Jamil, he's getting better and better every day. So good. That was that was like 
Honestly, dude. Textbook, dog. <laughs> that was really good. That was really good. Guys, leave Bobby a comment um, just in, of encouragement. Also, hopefully that like shook your nerves out. If you're like, ah, I've never done this before. I don't know what it's going to feel like. I just, you know, he just did it. And it, he didn't have any like, you know, sneaky things up his sleeve. There was nothing like pretentious here. He, he didn't have like, um, you know, giga chat yeah. energy or anything like that. He <laughs> there was, we go, giga chat. Uh, <laughs> no, I did have giga chat energy. Oh, you did have yeah. giga chat energy. Um, but you know, it's just getting it done, right? Just making the call. So, um, as Let's promised, order a pizza. as promised, I'm gonna order a pizza. Let's go. <laughs> I hope he answers. My God, <laughs> Bobby's calling. It's me again. I'm calling for a pizza. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have called for my number. I know. I thought of that after you started calling. <laughs> Okay, we're going to give it a couple of minutes here before we sign off, and then we're going to try from Bobby's line because we got to order a pizza because this guy, that was too good of a joke not to button it up. So, um, Jenna, uh, thank you so much again for hopping on with us today. Super enlightening. You know, we we see what we, what we got here, right? Uh, we've been on here for less than 90 minutes. Incredible, incredible uh, uh, leads, right? We have two leads. 90 minutes of calling in two leads. That is unheard of. That's just not normal. It's not normal. On, on, on a high equity list, when you're calling, straight calling, there is no chance that in 90 minutes you're going to have two solid leads. It's impossible. I've done this for over 20 years. I know this game better than anybody else. And I, I say that with not bravado. I say that because it's a fact. When I, when I tell you that, that what we have here is special, I really mean that. So do yourselves a favor, make that jump, take that, take that leap of faith in yourself because it's not, it's not about me. You're not taking a leap of faith in me. You're watching this because you like me. But you're really watching this because deep down, you love you and you want more for you. You want to have a different situation. You really are dissatisfied with whatever you're doing for your job right now. You're looking for an opportunity to parachute out of it, to do something different, to make the kind of money that is meaningful, life-changing for your family. That only happens by doing something outside of your comfort zone. That only happens by doing something different from what you did yesterday. Today is your chance. Um, Dr. Deal Junkie, the link is in the description right now. Take that leap of faith. Jenna, if there was anything that you could say to somebody right now that's watching, that's sitting there kind of like, ah, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What would you say? I just, I like, I really liked what you said earlier about kind of if, if they're worth it or not. Like, I really feel whenever you were talking earlier and you said, about if it was the, how you have it as just a, a one-time purchase. And I love that idea just because I feel like if it was free, everybody would take it. Everybody would take the opportunity, but how many people would actually do something about it? Because it's going to come down to the level that you value yourself at. And I feel like if, if we're looking at this, I mean, it's less than a thousand dollars. And I think about how much we invest in our children or our spouses or our parents or how much we spend on Christmas or how much we do all these different things. And it comes down to this, the, the level of self-worth. Like if you feel that, like, first off, you just showed like the software works. Like, so it's not like, okay, well, I'm not sure if I want to invest a thousand dollars to see, you know, I don't know if it works or not. Like we know it does. Like I've gotten deals from it. I know tons of people that have got deals from it. So I'm an investor myself. We know what works, but it has to come down to a belief in will you do the work and are you worth it is going to be what it's going to come down to. Like if you're committed to do something different, to have a different life, then this is going to be what it is. Like having somebody like you, like 
Bobby is sitting there with the opportunity to be mentored by somebody like you. This is going to be an opportunity where people have potentially access to seeing your calls or maybe in time hand holding and working with you, like having somebody like you sit down with somebody like what would that what would that value be? And this is just that next step, this next opportunity for somebody to take their life in the direction. And obviously, if if they're if you guys are sitting here all the way until now, or just tuning into the video now, it's because you have something different inside of you. Like growing up, I always felt like I always felt like I was weird. But also what I found out was that I I felt like I had something different. It was like a different spark. It was a different fire inside of me that I didn't relate to a lot of people. But it was only once I got into the the world of real estate or the world of entrepreneurs or the the world of people who are different or go getters that I actually felt like I fit in and, and I got along with people. And this is that stepping stone to get you to that next level, to be surrounded by people who are like minded, who are going to push you to do more, not just settle for average. So I, I really look forward to, to working with you guys because this software is, is what I know and what I love. And once you become part of it, then we'll be working together. So I look forward to that. Jenna, I love you. Love you. Great to see you. Thank you so much again for your time today, your energy, your wonderful smile. I know that you guys don't realize this. I know this because off camera we were chatting, but Jenna just traveled all night long. She slept 45 minutes. She's not even wearing regular pants. <laughs> There's pajamas down here. <laughs> She's wearing pajamas down there. Um, but she she showed up. She showed up for us. She showed up because she she genuinely cares. She genuinely cares. And there's there's nobody that I know that has a heart like yours. So Jenna, thank you so much. I love you. You're the best. Bobby, let's order a pizza. Let's order a pizza. I got call that we, number. That's a uh, uh I have questions yeah. and we can we can splice if it if it uh, if if it whatever. But the once I sign up for Dr. Deal Junkie, what's the next steps? Is there like what's the support like and how hard is the setup of it? And is there like a yeah, what, a what, community what, what of any you, kind? Why don't you is roll a into, Facebook group I can ro join? roll into that with us, Jenna? Yeah, so let me share my screen real fast here. So support is fantastic. So, yeah, so, so okay. yeah, I, I don't even know all your cool terms, Bobby. I feel like an old. <laughs> it's lit. It's lit. I feel like that forty-year-old woman in in Jamil's <laughs> life when he was seventeen. I don't know these cool <laughs> terms. Um, so you'll see here. There's, there's there's email support. You'll see there's phone support. Oh, and then at the bottom right is going to be live chat, so you can. Uh, I, I missed the email in the okay. phone. Yeah. So on the left side navigation, you'll see how it opens and closes. There's going to be right. at the bottom. There's email support. There's phone nice. support, and then there's live chat, so you can ask any questions. That's and great. It, and once we once we get rolling with this, I'm sure Jamil and I will be unveiling more opportunities to work together. Maybe it would be either on a biweekly or a monthly or however often that we want to. Absolutely, I, I we 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 I want to be able to come in and answer questions and help you guys. And so, um, Jenna, what we'll do is we'll put together a Facebook group for Doctor Deal Junkie members, and we can come in answer questions. And then once a month, we'll go in there and and do a, 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 like a coaching and come in there and actually give people um, access to answer any questions. And we can do some live role playing. We can call live if you guys want. It would be, be so fun. We'll do some stream yards, bring you on. You guys call and I'll critique you and I'll help you. And we'll like, uh, you know, walk you through it. But I think um, uh, I absolutely uh, would love to do that with you guys. So uh, let's put that on the list to do ASAP, Jenna. Let's make that Dr. Deal Junkie Facebook group. And um we're looking forward to having you guys be a part of our community. Thank you so much. Let's order that pizza. All right. Let's order that pizza. Now we're going to order pizza. James ain't getting out of this thing without a pizza. Somebody called me back named Miguel Lopez, but I'll, I'll follow up with them. Okay. Pizza time. Oh, I said his full name. Well, that, that's, it sounds like a common last name. Okay. We did call it John Smith too today, didn't we? Joe. Joe Smith. Pick up the phone! Jimmy! Pick up the phone! I don't think 
Domino's would not answer this many but times. Pizza! Have we a pizza? Pepperonis! Just pick up your phone! <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and on that note. Ah, uh, shucks. Goodbye. We out.